This is a 12 gauge, and this is a 410. It's tiny, hard to shoot, doesn't recoil, and the guns that it uses are lightweight and addictive to shoot. I've wanted one for a while, so I finally got one. This is one of the best guns I've ever bought. Josh, I was in the Dominican Republic and I shot 410s with some seriousness for the first time and I struggled like um, uh, the imbecile that I am. More, more than I do with a 12. Why have we gone side by side rather than over and under? The, all the over and unders that are good are really expensive. That is beautiful, nicely made and under a thousand pounds. Let's see if it can, if it can break anything. I mean, there's, there's no excuses other than it's a 410. I got the big bombs. I got the baby bombs. Three inches of 410 feels better than two and a half inches of 410. Yeah, I mean, two and a half inches of 11 gram of sevens. I mean, put it in the right place, they'll do the job, surely. Yeah, but you know that I do like like a sovereign. <laughs> More death, the better, generally speaking. I mean, I'm amazed. We do a lot of junior lessons here at, at Barbary and obviously lots of youngsters using 410 for bits and pieces. We use thousands and thousands and thousands of these shells a year. And I am amazed what they will break. It is pretty impressive. Get them in the right place, they will break the high tower and stuff. And well, we'll see in a minute if they, if I can break any clays with them. But um, yeah, they're, I mean, they're super soft and, and they do the job. Oh, it's like nothing going off those two and a halfs. Threes have a little bit more something something, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's hardly uh, <laughs> still not, not a stiff too, waking up. Right, All right, let's have a go. Uh, you, can, uh, you can show the way. Oh, thanks, mate. And then you can like put your instructor hat on and give advice before you've actually shot the damn thing. Oh. Now I'm worried because it works. <laughs> Have a go on that. I mean, well, I've been subjected that. to cheap 410s I mean, for too long. That is a smart piece you, of gun you've making. Two in a row as well. Double triggers. I must remember that. Um, we could pull the first one twice, but nothing will happen. <laughs> I beat Josh Brown. <laughs> That's all I know. I mean, you've got seven grams more, more lead than me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. And I have some 18 grams. They're much more potent, to be fair. Those brakes were, what's that, 25, 30 yards? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's moving, which will, which will help, but it's, um, yeah. It's yeah they're well. very potent. Right, let's have another go. Pull. Pull. I mean, I'm glad I brought you along That's for advice. Right. Absolutely milled it as well. Oh, mate, that turned it into that, gave that nice little grey powder thing that just stays in the air. Yeah. That's always a handsome um, thing. I mean, it handles nicely. Um, there is something about the 410. I can see the mystery, right? And I'm going to blame my American friends and viewers for pushing it, because they hunt with these things. And it, it's pretty incredible. Like, I mean, we've, we've all been on game days where you've seen, like, young lads, young girls that are starting out shooting and shooting one of these things for the first, first time. And the stuff they kill them, like, is, is pretty incredible. And as we see there, like, the brakes on those. At 30 yards, that's a dead pheasant every yeah. time. Providing you put it in the right place. Well, that's the art to it, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, um, apparently. I think I've sussed it out. I've done very little shooting with a 410, but where it's very fast handling, I think, for me, like I try to mount the gun straight up, not purposely out in front, but end up straight in front because it's so quick, um, and end up at a gap which, obviously, the target didn't need. So I'm now going to try and slow it down, make a conscious effort to mount the gun in behind and then come through the line of the bird. This is a professional shooting instructor learning to shoot a 410 on the fly. Yeah, this is good this. stuff. Oh. Nice second shot. Where they are so fast handling, for me, like that wouldn't be naturally how I want to shoot stuff, but the gun just ends up there. There, I made a conscious effort to insert the gun on the back and sort of come through to stop myself ending up miles and miles in front. But it's interesting. Um, we'll have to go and find something a little bit harder. What have we got here, Josh? We've got one of the sporting stands for tomorrow. So we've got a right to left cross open behind the bank and then a left to right quite low batu curling into the bottom of the bank there. Sounds tasty. There we go. Well done, Johnny. All right, go on. Uh, before we go and shoot another stand, what are your thoughts, other than these 18 grams are probably, for the 12 bore regular, the wiser choice yeah definitely if, if if you're sort of used to shooting you know a 12 bore or a sort of bigger gauge gun normally and sort of switching down to a smaller gauge um like the 410 i think the 18 gram sixes there are are the cartridges to shoot i mean it's it's surprising it's it's a nice handling gun you've definitely got to change how you shoot though okay for me there just what we've been doing around obviously it's very fast handling as in very quick to move but also it'll be very quick to slow down and you can be very mindful of how much you are accelerating the gun Smooth with a capital smooth. Yeah, otherwise you're going to end up either, you know, if coming too fast and end up whipping through stuff massively. And I think 
in, more importantly, if you sort of start poking around out in front of stuff, you're going to be in trouble. And so, more so than a 12 ball, there are potentially less hacks. Your discipline has to be a yeah, little I bit think more you've got correct. To be a lot more like deliberate, if you like. Okay. I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm learning as much as you are as we're shooting them now. But... Well, might I suggest that we find a different stand and try some things? Yeah, let's go and try. Try maintain, stuff. try some different things, see what happens. So, what gun did I buy? It is an AYA number four. Before we continue our rather humiliating shooting experience, let me show you through what I have bought. The number four is a box lock ejector gun. The number three is the non-ejector. But this one has ejectors, nice powerful AYA ejectors. They're housed in this deep fore end, and this action, although it is a scaled for 10 action, is still pretty deep. And that's because a box lock needs to be a certain size to operate. Honestly, I don't want it any smaller. It's already quite petite, but that little bit of extra weight and size runs nicely through the grip. You've got a slight bit of sort of swan necking down here to make it thicker at the back, and it feels good. I've shot some 410s that were just too small. This one feels very shootable, even if it might not be. You have a walnut stock finished in a checkered heel. And I think in reality, we're gonna to have to change that at some point, but we'll get into that later. It is oil finished, hand checkered in Eibar in Spain. Having been to the factory, I can attest to you that even nowadays, this is very much the handmade gun. Shot cam do a 20 gauge side by side mount now and a 12 gauge side by side mount, but I don't think the market for 410 side by side mounts is that rife. No. However, I feel like the diameter of that isn't much greater than like a 10 bore barrel. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This I believe they call um, MacGyvering. Or bodging. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Right. I don't think there's any point zeroing because it's gonna be on the wrong barrel. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Because it's, it's off center. Like the side by side mounts are centered. This is an over and under 12 gauge mount. Bad. Ooh. I don't know if the recoil is going to be enough to set the shot cam on. In fact, I'm going to turn it into constant record mode because I'm a cool dude. It's like 26 degrees centigrade today, which is a warm day. And we've put probably 50 shells through that. She's warm, and even for a little 410, she's, she's hot enough. You can tell because all the, those three fingers in your left hand get all red raw. Yeah. But this is why cool people who shoot side by side wear gloves, and I or, feel like I might have to invest. Uh, one of those guards. You can have like a pair of leather driving gloves, you look really cool then. Mm, yeah, black leather ones with short cuffs yeah. and loads of holes in the back. She yeah. has never had a service. She needs a service. I'll actually do this one. I like this gun. This is a gun I'm actually proud to have in the collection. What a beauty. So I've said this before to people who've watched. A wise man said, who won, I believe, the European 410 championships. He said, if you want to be good at 410s, you shoot nothing else. I can believe that. They're so unique in the way they move and handle. So before we go and have a competition on the last stand, what have you learned about 410s? What is your quick exposure advice to 410s? If someone were to come to you now and say, what do you think? Leave them well alone, <laughs> stick to 12 <laughs> <laughs> For me, they are very fast handling. So in this this uh, this side by side, it's very fast handling. Whether some of the over numbers are slightly heavy would be any different. Um, it certainly has to be more deliberate with it and sort of very much more controlled on the swing. Um, it's nice. It's very satisfying. It's oddly satisfying about breaking a clay with a small caliber gun. I don't know why. Any range, it just sort of seems very satisfying. But um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed shooting it. Method wise, you're saying swing through at every target seems to be preferable for you with this gun. Yeah, I mean, for me, I would insert, try and insert the gun on, a lot of, on the back of a lot of the targets anyway. Um, obviously, subject to what they're doing, but most of the stuff I shoot, I'd insert on, on the back and accelerate through. But certainly with that, I'd find the same thing, you know insert and behind just but with less more, acceleration yeah, a bit more control on the swing with it so what is interesting like we say is i've managed to go to most stands and kill the first pair out yet can't repeat two or three pairs in a row but i guess that's learning to shoot one can't believe you still kept that fiver i thought i had been long gone by now. i mean you can't buy anything for a fiver in southampton <laughs> up here in rural wiltshire you can buy half a house for this but <laughs> so i keep it as a uh, memento yeah. of your lack of faith in my ability. But you can win it back now, because... Do you know what, I wouldn't take it back from you, because I'd like to see the Pro one again next year, you see, so I wouldn't take that back from you. Well, if you took it back from me, you could then <laughs> give it back <laughs> to me, the Pro one next year. <laughs> Mate, I'd have long spent it by then. <laughs> so why don't we do, I'll tell you, let's have a little competition then. We'll do five pairs, last stand. Um, this is one of the stands set up for tomorrow's race of sporting, so most of the guys here will be shooting it with a, with a 12 ball, and they'll find it really easy. Uh, I'm sure we can mess it up with a little 410. So 
We've got an orange standard teal, sort of slightly going left to right, and then a right to left standard cross off the bank. We'll do we'll individually do. quite simple, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, there's on report targets, hopefully, they'll be straightforward, but the sim pair might sort of mess things up a little bit. Should we do, let's do three on report pairs, and then two, two sim. Two sim. All right. Uh, on, you, can, you can show me the way. Oh, you thanks, mate. The pressure. Yeah, you boys, boys, the boys, pressure. let's go. Pull. I was you so can't, You can't claim that. I know you try to shoot behind the tree, but you can't. I mean, honestly, I was so <laughs> excited with the. The single A. <laughs> oh. Right, two out of four. I could be in, in for the shout here. I mean, I do think you could be. I, I'm struggling with them crosses for some reason. I, the sight picture and lead is so foreign to me. Yeah, with that. Like, to me, I feel like I'd just shoot straight at the front edge of that B, but I'd be giving it so many beans. Oh. That's how to do it. Well, fit ass rules, you best shoot, shoot your foot. <laughs> yeah, come on. I see, I believe in you. I know, I've seen you in action. Oh. <laughs> right, I just want to do this just for quite suspense to the, to the film. Thanks, mate. Well, now if you straight it. I can match you. You can match me, yeah. Oh. You look like you punched, because you do your little flick, and I've seen you shoot those going away targets really badly with your 12 bore actually, <laughs> in hindsight. You're, oh, you're flicking out over the top and right. out of the left of it. Yeah. All right, we'll try one with that. Go. Right, that, what's that two out of six? And yeah. You've got four out of six. Well, the tactician in me says, bank the A, don't worry about it. Call the draw, try your hardest. But let's see what we can do. Oh. I tell you what, there is nothing so satisfactory as shooting easy targets with a 410. Shooting easy targets or beating me, because I mean, you'd act like you just won a world championship there and we're not allowed to say that, so. I think that out of all the birds, a going away star bird is shot in more different ways. Watching shooters and filming lots of different shooters, yeah. I see those broken with more different techniques. When you get across them, most people will be using a very similar kind of concept with I don't know, what do you, is that yeah, bollocks? I mean, I've, well, I don't know, a lot of people have different sight pictures, don't they, in terms of, you know, what they see when they look down the gun. Obviously, we're not looking at the gun, you know, that's what I'm trying not to do. We're trying to look at the bird, but, um, yeah, how your gun's set up in terms of the picture you see, you know, some people might say, right, flat going away as I'm shooting well below them, or I'm shooting well above them, or I'm shooting at them, depending on how that gun set up. So it's interesting. I mean, I imagine that we haven't sort of shot on a pattern plate and stuff, but for me, it comes up, you know, there's a little bit of height in there, but I imagine it shoots fairly flat. For me anyway as opposed to what i'm used to i mean for me sort of you usually see a, a good, good chunk, chunk of rib yeah, yeah. Good chunk of rib, just a bit more peripheral vision around the bird i can see what's going on you know it means sort of keep my head up and, and see what's going on really um for me i've got better sight of where the bird is and, and i've always got a view of, of the target i want to shoot yeah, and you've always got a view of the rib so you've always got some kind of idea of where the gun's pointing yeah you've got a reference nice. point. though we're not going to look at the gun it's we still need to know where it is no you're still so, conscious of its yeah, existence yeah. it's part of your sight picture correct yeah. Well, Johnny, you've taken another fiver off me. Um, That's all right, I'll keep my lucky one. It's fine. It's an IOU because I haven't got a fiver off me. <laughs> Mate, thank you. It's been fascinating to hear your thoughts on it. I'm keen to shoot this more and get to know it more. I think I'll stick a pad on the back, get it into a slightly more Johnny yeah, friendly get, length. It's, it's sort of built for someone who's my height, stroke, slightly smaller. Though, though. And yet you <laughs> still couldn't beat me with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting thing, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun taking it out for a play. Whether, whether I'll ever shoot it in any serious capacity, it doesn't matter. No, but you can act, listen if you go on any sort of walk around days or any sort of little driven days or something, you think actually, you know, yeah. we're going on some play days. When I've shot the bag, take this out <laughs> and the birds will be safe. <laughs> They're safe anyway. <laughs> oh, it's been good fun. Right, thank you. Good to see you, Johnny. Till next time, mate. Pleasure, thank you. That was a hell of a fun experience. I love this gun. This is probably the best gun I've bought in a little while in terms of value for money and fun for money. I need to do some things to it. It doesn't fit. I need to extend it. I don't think I'll go full 16 inches, which is about where I need to be. I'm thinking 15 and a half may well be just good enough. Where it's quite a small gun anyway, it's quite nice to sort of get around and work it. But hey, we might try a few different pads and see which one works best for me without putting too much effort in and finishing it. And that said, it does just look really good without one. 
maybe would, but then it would ruin the fact that this is really still quite original in terms of finish. And just flattening the back and adding a pad doesn't ruin that too much in my mind, right? We all have acceptable changes you can make to a gun before it's it's less original. The 410 thing, I'm slowly starting to hate them less. Like it's nice to be challenged and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot less pressure when shooting one of these things. The three inch cartridges, way better than the two and a half inch cartridges. I know it's only an extra seven grams, but if you look at that on a percentage basis, that's a lot. That's another 55 odd percent from 11 to 18 grams. The supply of 410s isn't as readily available as 12.4, but honestly, it's just a thing that when you see them, you buy them, right? You don't just go to a playground and casually hope they have a few boxes. When you see a slab of what you want, you buy a slab of what you want. And I doubt that any 410 owner is shooting it that much that they're gonna be needing more than a slab a week or a slab a month. Or maybe I'm wrong. I know that certainly in America, supply is more limited, and as such, home loading is really, really rife. And I am not a home loader. I don't have the patience for it, it turns out, but I am aware that you can load some spicy loads for these. For me, 18 grams of six did the job. I've shot game with 18 grams of six, and it did a great job of good, clean kills. There are some rust spots here on the trigger guard, a touch on the barrel, but nothing that is not just superficial. It needs a clean up, it definitely needs a service. Hey, it ain't going anywhere. I look forward to playing and tinkering and making this mine. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day. All right, let's take bets in the comment section. How long is this gun actually gonna last in my collection?